फोर्स एंड लॉज ऑफ मोशन पार्ट टू फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ मोशन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी लर्न वॉट ऑफ फोर्सेज एंड वॉट बैलेंस्ड एंड अनबैलेंस्ड फोर्सेज आर इन दिस वीडियो वी विल लर्न अबाउट द फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ मोशन एंड सी द रिलेशन बिटवीन इनर्शिया एंड मास Remember we learned in the last video that scientists like Galileo Galilei and Isaac Newton debunked the old ideas of motion and developed a completely new approach to understand it. To understand how the first law of motion came to be, let us first look at the experiments conducted by Galileo Galilei. Galileo Galilei had a keen interest in mathematics since his childhood. In 1589 in a series of essays Galileo presented theories about falling objects using an inclined plane In 1592 he was appointed a professor of mathematics at the University of Padua where he continued his study of motion on inclined planes and reasoned that objects move with a constant speed when no force acts on them Let us take a look at an experiment performed by Galileo. He took a marble and released it from the top of an inclined plane. He observed that the velocity of the marble increased while rolling down. Again, he took the same marble and this time tried to make it climb up the inclined plane. This time he observed that the velocity of the marble decreased as it went upwards. Galileo further argued that if two inclined planes of opposite slopes were kept beside each other then a marble released from the top of the slope will roll down only to climb up to the same height of the opposite slope. If the angle of inclination of the right plane was decreased then the marble will go a bit further to reach the same height from which it was released if the slope is ultimately reduced to zero then the marble will move forever to reach the height from where it was released in this case the unbalanced forces working on the marble is zero hence we can say an unbalanced force is needed to change the motion of the marble but no net force is needed to sustain the uniform motion of the marble here we have assumed that no external unbalanced force is present however in practice the presence of unbalanced forces like frictional forces restrict the motion of the marble Isaac Newton further studied Galileo's ideas and presented three fundamental laws of motion. These three laws are known as Newton's laws of motion. The first law of motion states that an object remains in a state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change that state by an applied unbalanced force. This means an object will maintain its original state of rest or state of motion and will resist any kind of change. A football on the ground does not move unless the footballer kicks it and a football going towards the goal will not stop unless the goalkeeper stops it. This tendency of objects to remain at rest or to keep moving with the same velocity is called inertia. That is why the first law of motion is also known as the law of inertia. Let us consider an example of a car. If it suddenly starts moving, your upper body tends to move backwards. This is due to the inertia of rest of our body which opposes the motion and hence does not let our upper body move forward. but the lower body which is in contact with the car moves forward along with the car when the car starts 
when the car takes a sharp turn our bodies tend to move to the opposite side of the turn due to the inertia of motion also when brakes are applied to stop the car our bodies tend to move forward This is due to the inertia of motion of our body which opposes any change in the state of motion. That is why safety belts are worn to prevent accidents. Safety belts exert a force that opposes our forward motion and make it slower. Let us do another simple experiment to observe the effect of inertia. Let us take a glass, a card large enough to cover the mouth of the glass, and a coin. Place the card above the glass such that it covers its mouth and then place the coin on top of the card. Pull out the card as quickly as possible. Do you think the coin will move along with the card? Well, that might happen if you move the card slowly. But if you pull the card really fast, the coin above it will fall vertically downward in the glass instead of moving along with it. This is due to the inertia of rest of the coin which tries to maintain its state of rest even when the card is removed. From this experiment, we can conclude that a body at rest tends to stay at rest through inertia the bodies offer a resistance to any change in their state of rest or of motion but do you think all bodies have the same inertia let us think of some examples you can move a football easily by kicking it but what about a car even if you push it with all your strength, it will hardly move. Similarly, you can easily move an empty shopping cart. While moving a shopping cart filled with vegetables is a lot harder. That is, we need to put in less effort to move empty carts than carts filled with vegetables. This means that the cart filled with vegetables has a lesser tendency to move than the empty one which in turn means that the cart filled with vegetables has more inertia than the empty cart. Accordingly, we can say objects with more mass have more inertia. Thus, the relation between mass and inertia can be stated as follows. Inertia is the natural tendency of an object to resist a change in its state of rest or motion. and the mass of an object is a measure of its inertia. In this video, we learned what the first law of motion is and what the relation between inertia and mass is. In the next video, we will see what is the second law of motion and how it is represented mathematically.